If you're building an app in Stacker and you want to limit how people interact with that data, that is you want to change what they can see, what they can edit, and what new records they can add, well, you don't want to miss this video. I'm going to be going into detail about those very things, so stick around and let's get into it. Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth Kronovost. I own a company called Gap Consulting that helps you to organize and automate your business and life without using code. So we use exclusively no-code tools. If that's of interest and you want to explore more about that, do check the links below this video. I'll include a bunch of resources for you to take a look at. Before I get into the heart of this video, we're talking again about Stacker and how to use it to really limit permissions for your users. But before I get to that, I do want to mention our upcoming free live training. If you're interested in learning how automation can help you to build and scale your business or just save you time in general, you won't want to miss this training. It's completely free. Check the link below. It's garethpronovost.com slash webinar dash registration. But without further ado, let's jump right on into my screen and we're going to be talking about Stacker here. I'm going to go ahead and log in. And the first thing that we're really going to focus on here is the different permissions. So first of all, where do we want to go in order to even activate all of these different permissions and how people can interact with our app? Now, if you're new to Stacker, it is merely a front end for Airtable and other tools. So your data lives in your back end, in your actual database, and Stacker is, the, is one way that people can access that data. So inside of my little Airtable demo here, this is a, a recurring demo that we've explored in the past in some previous videos. So if you're interested, do check those out. But this is essentially the user experience for my, my team or whoever is logging into this app. They get this uh, these two options at the top, once they've logged in, they see clients, they see consultations. And specifically, I want to alter the consultations here. I want to change how they can interact with this consultation data. So my first step is to click on the gear icon and to go to set up home. And if I scroll down midway through the page, I have the different tables here. And you see that I get three different levels of control. I have my settings, my fields, and my permissions. So rather than drilling into these one at a time, I'm just going to click on consultations. And in fact, it's going to take me essentially to all of these. Let's start by drilling into the fields level of settings. So in the setup of fields, we see all of the different fields that we have inside of our Airtable database. And we can choose just by toggling these buttons on or off if that information is going to be made visible and if our users in Stacker are going to have access to it. So just by turning any one of these off, we can remove it from our app and completely eliminate what people have access to when using our Stacker app. So let's say I wanted to remove created by, status, and maybe the consultation date. If I remove those things, then I can uh, flip back into the app now. Let's go ahead and impersonate users. And in this case, I'll impersonate Fred. And once this loads up, we will see that Fred will only be able to see himself. And when we drill into consultations, we see that there's less information available on the consultation. When we open that up, all we see is the name, the receipt, and the replay link. So again, let's flip back into stop impersonating and we'll flip back into those settings by going back to set up home, scrolling back down and going back into our setup for consultations and looking at the fields. And those are precisely the fields that we've allowed to bring in. So the client, the receipt, the replay link, and of course the image. This is the image that relates to the user. So Fred's picture. So those are the only pieces of information that our users are ever going to see given the way that we just toggled these things off. Next, let's drill into permissions. And this is where we're going to get a lot more granular about what people can do with the data that we've given them access to. So you see here that they only have access to the fields that we kept toggled on, that is name, receipt URL, and replay link. 
And here we have the ability in these three columns to get granular about what people can change. So there are really three different levels of permissions. They can read something, that is, see it and only see it. They can update something, which means that they can actually make a change to that data in the Stacker app and it will be instantly reflected in the backend database. And then lastly, they can also create new items. So, of course, they have to have the ability to read one of these fields before they can have update or create options as well. If I toggle off read and make the receipt URL invisible to them, then of course they can't update or create it. If I toggle update on, I can have read and update, but they still can't create new. So this might be a useful feature if you want somebody to have access to existing data and you want them to be able to edit if there's a, a typo or an error, but you never want somebody to enter new data. And lastly, if we toggle create on and update off, we can have that option as well. So in this case, somebody can read existing data, they can add new data, but they can't update or edit existing data. And then of course, the other option is have everything toggled on where they can read, they can update, and they can create. So let's get a little particular about how we're going to give people permissions with the receipt URL. Maybe we want them to be able to create new entries of receipt URLs, but they can't update existing entries. And let's do the opposite on the replay link. Maybe for replay link, they cannot create new records with replay link but they can update existing data for a replay link. So we'll go ahead and move on with those settings. Now, if you want a more high level view before we scroll down, you can access the ability to update or create just right here. So if you have no reason to allow your users to ever create records in your app, or similarly, if you have no reason to allow them to update records, you can just toggle these buttons off and completely remove the update option. Of course, that's not what we want for our example, so we're gonna keep that toggled on, but just know that that is something that you can do at a high level that completely removes that capability for your users. Okay, now that we're done here, we're gonna drill into layouts. Layouts is where we can edit how the app looks and feels for these three different pieces of the puzzle. So drilling into create here, we see that they get the ability when they create a new record, they will have these pieces to fill out. And again, this is dependent upon how we set up our options when we established the create or update permissions. We can drill out of here and go into detail. And this is what they see when they open up a record. So if they click on a record inside of the list, they get the detail version of that. And so we can get really particular about how information flows here. We can reorder these things, move them around, uh, decide if we want to bring in images or otherwise. Um, you know, so we have a lot of different settings options. We can add fields, we can add highlight, we can add banner, a record list. So let me just uh, showcase a couple of these options here. If I add a record list here, bring a related list, this would be a great place for you perhaps to add chat. So if you had uh, a, an ongoing list of chat or notes on a particular project or client identifier, you could drop in a related list here so that when somebody accesses that project or when they access that consultation, they see a list of notes that include things that even they could have added to this. Of course, in that example, for a list of notes, we would need another table to track notes and relate those notes back to whatever the project or consultation level is. You can also display contents of a link in an embedded iframe. And this is a really powerful thing if you're using any kind of uh, you know, interaction with dashboards or you're bringing in any other forms or things like that, you can do that by embedding them in an iframe directly inside of your app. So you have a lot of flexibility here in terms of how you can allow your users to interact with the detail version. Now let's zoom out yet again. First, save our layout in the bottom left corner, and then we'll zoom out 
and take a look at those previous consults. And then this is the list of consultations. So this is how we've displayed this and set all of that up. So if we were to drill back out of this and take a look at our app, let's now jump in and actually impersonate a user and see what that user experience is like. So I'm gonna impersonate a user. Uh, this time I'll impersonate George Jetson. Let's go ahead and drill in. And of course, when we log in as George, we only see George because we don't want our clients to see everybody. Uh, and when he clicks onto consultations, he's only going to see those consultations that pertain to him. Now I can drill into each of these and this is where I get the ability to view the data. This is again the detail level. Now we want to check out how the edit function works. So if George wants to make a change to anything here, he only needs to click on edit and you'll see that he only has the ability to edit the replay link. And if you recall, when we were establishing our settings, we decided that users could only edit the replay link and they could only create the receipt URL. So George can come in here and change the replay link. And once he's made those changes, go ahead and click save. Now the important thing to note here is that those changes are instantly reflected back in our Airtable database. So if we pop back into Airtable and I look at that particular record that George just made a, an edit on, we see right here that the replay link is now example.com, which is what I just typed in. So it, the important thing to note here is that any changes that George makes, it's not just impacting his user experience in the app, it's also editing the data in the back end. So now let's take a look at the other level of this. That is if George wants to add new data here, what happens? Well, he can only make changes to the things that we've given him the ability to update. So it's funny because even though when we looked at the create new page, we saw all of the fields on there, but since we didn't give George permission to access those things, they in fact don't show up on his, on his ability to create a new record. So if George creates a new receipt URL, I'll just call this 123.com, we can go ahead and save this. And of course that record will be created in Airtable, but the issue here is that it's not properly linked to George. And so given that that's the case, he's not able to see it in his database. So this is definitely something that we're gonna to need to work on in a future video to make sure that when George adds data, he can instantly see it. There are ways around this and we'll be taking a look at that soon. But in the meantime, I hope you got a ton of value out of this so far and make sure you tune in next time to see how we close the loop on this. Again, as I mentioned earlier in this video, if you're looking to save a ton of time using automation and really learn how to master these no-code tools, I'd love to invite you to join us for our weekly live training. Check the link below, garethpronovost.com slash webinar dash registration. If you could save even a few hours every week, wouldn't it be worth it to you to jump on in? That's it for this video. Thanks so much for joining me and let me know what questions you have below. As always, I hope you found that to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website and see how we can help. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will help you level up in Airtable quickly. And we also have some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts. We have some online courses and a group coaching program. And for advanced needs, we can build a bespoke solution for you from scratch. So swing on by, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.